What's up guys, day 14 of the 100 days of leak code. We're gonna be doing another easy problem today and it's another easy problem that a lot of people are having a hard time with. It's only got an acceptance rate of 35.5%, uh, which is pretty low. Um, so yeah, let's get right to reading the description. So given an array of integers, check if there exists two integers, n and m, such that n is the double of m, um, basically n equals two times m. More formally, check if there exists two indices i and j, such that i not equal to j, zero is less than or equal to one, j uh, is less than array length. And then basically the array um, at the ith index equals two times array at the jth index. Here's some examples. Um, this one's true because we got five and 10. They're two different numbers. Here's another example. We got seven and 14. True. Nothing here. None of those. Um, double to get another number in the array. Now, this pro this situation with the indices um, is only going to come into play with zeros. So if we have one zero in the array, um, we still want to return false because if we only have one zero, then we um, then then it's going to be at the same index. So uh, there's not two distinct uh, indices. Um, now in the solution that I'm going to be implementing, uh, we won't be checking for this. Uh, test case um, directly. There's other solutions where where you do check uh, for whether or not there's a zero in a more direct way, but the solution that I have doesn't do that. So let's get to this solution. So we're going to create a hash set. Uh, hash sets are good, constant lookup times. Um, they're really good for um, very, very quick, quick algorithms. Uh, we can just call it the set. And it's just going to be a new uh, hash set of integers, and that's it. Now, I'm just going to use a um, enhanced for loop here. We're going to say for int cur in array, and we're going to do a bunch of stuff in here. So, first thing we want to check for is if cur. Um, uh, excuse me. If the set contains cur, we're going to return true. And you know that happened in the last video too. I switched between Java and Python. Those are the two languages I code in, so I always I always forget uh, whether or not to capitalize the uh, boolean values. Anyway, that's funny. Back to it. So if it contains cur, we're going to return true. So this this might strike you as odd at first, but it will make sense as soon as as we do this. Now, obviously, if if we don't return um, in that statement, what we can do is we can say the set dot add cur. Uh, excuse me, cur times two, and then if uh, cur modulo two equals zero. In other words, if cur is even if the current number is even, we are going to do the set dot add uh, cur divided by two. And you know what? Let's just keep with the theme, or it's going to bother me. It's going to bother me a lot. Let's do that. And down here we can return false. There we go. So we are adding both two times number and half times the number, which means that if we come here and the set contains this number, it means that we've either already encountered half of the number or double of the number uh, in the previous iterations. So what that means is that we can just return true because in either way, whether we've encountered half of the number or double the number, we've satisfied what we're looking for. There's, there's, there's an integer in the array that has its double also present in the array. 
and that's what we're looking for. So that's why we're adding two times the current value. And if it's an even number, we're adding half the current, uh, the current value because in subsequent iterations, we're just gonna be doing this one check and we'll be good. Now let's submit it. There we go, pretty quick. Um, so that's how we solved that problem. And uh, today, like I said, day 14 of the 100 days of Leco, we got another 86 being enjoying these videos. Like, subscribe, see you tomorrow.